Why do we sometimes push God out of the equation when reaching for greatness? What are we really building when our hearts are filled with pride? Could the ancient story of the Tower of Babel hold a mirror to our modern lives? What happens when ambition overtakes submission to God's will? The story of the Tower of Babel isn't just a relic of ancient times, it's a powerful metaphor that still echoes today. Set in a time when humanity had survived the devastation of the Great Flood, people were meant to repopulate and spread out across the earth, living in harmony with God's plan. But rather than obeying, they chose a different path. Imagine a vast plain in the land of Shinar, where humanity, united by a single language, gathered with a collective purpose. At first glance, their unity might seem admirable. But underneath the surface, something darker was brewing, a hunger for power, for independence, for control. They no longer sought God's direction but instead aimed to elevate themselves to the heavens. Come, let us build a city, with a tower that reaches the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves, they said, Genesis 11 verse 4. It wasn't just about building, it was about rebellion, about replacing God's authority with their own ambitions. This wasn't merely a tower made of brick and mortar, it was a monument to the human ego. They wanted to construct a legacy, to be remembered for their achievements, and to live without fear of being scattered across the earth as God had commanded, Genesis 9 verse 1. In their minds, unity was strength, but in their hearts, it was pride that held them together. The tower represented more than just architectural ingenuity, it symbolized humanity's attempt to seize control of its destiny, to prove that they could ascend to heaven on their own terms, without God. It was the ultimate expression of human arrogance, an effort to declare independence from divine guidance. As we reflect on this story, we are forced to ask ourselves, how often do we, too, try to build our own towers? How often do we chase after success, fame, or security, forgetting the one who gives us the very breath to live? Babel is not just a tale of an ancient civilization, it's a timeless warning about the dangers of human pride, the temptation to create our own paths and ignore the path God has set before us. In this opening section, we lay the groundwork for a deeper exploration of the story. The tower may have been built centuries ago, but the motives behind it, pride, ambition, and the desire to control our destiny, are still alive in each of us today. To truly understand the story of the Tower of Babel, we must first look at the historical and spiritual backdrop in which this event took place. The story unfolds in the early chapters of Genesis, not long after the Great Flood, which had wiped out most of humanity due to its sinfulness. Noah and his descendants were tasked with repopulating the earth and living in accordance with God's commands, Genesis 9 verse 1. This was a time of new beginnings, of divine restoration and purpose. The people found themselves in the land of Shinar, a fertile plain that offered a perfect opportunity for them to settle and thrive. As they gathered in this region, they all spoke the same language, which enabled them to communicate easily and work together toward common goals. Unity in language and purpose gave them immense potential. But it wasn't long before this unity became a dangerous tool, used not to glorify God, but to glorify themselves. Instead of spreading out across the earth as God had commanded, the people of Shinar decided to settle in one place and make a name for themselves by constructing a city and a massive tower. Their goal was clear, let us build ourselves a city, with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth, Genesis 11 verse 4. This wasn't just a construction project, it was an outright act of defiance. The tower wasn't being built to honor God, it was being built to assert human dominance, to prove that they could achieve greatness on their own terms. By seeking to ascend to the heavens, they were symbolically trying to reach the realm of God, to elevate themselves to a divine level. This was more than ambition, it was hubris, a direct challenge to God's authority. On the surface, their unity might seem admirable. The whole of humanity, working together with one purpose, shouldn't that be a good thing? But their unity was based on self-centered goals, not on faithfulness to God. They were united in their pride, their desire for fame, 
and their fear of being scattered across the earth, directly contradicting God's command to fill the earth. The people of Babel were attempting to secure their future by their own strength, without acknowledging their dependence on God. They believed that through their collective efforts, they could achieve lasting security and success. Their desire to build a tower that reached the heavens was a literal and metaphorical attempt to gain control over their fate, to establish themselves as masters of their own destiny. The tower represented a deeper spiritual truth, when humanity seeks to build its own kingdom apart from God, disaster is inevitable. The Bible warns repeatedly about the dangers of pride and self-exaltation. Proverbs 16 verse 18 reminds us, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. The people of Babel were building on shaky foundations, their ambition was rooted in self-glorification, not in obedience to God. In Babel, we see a clear example of what happens when people refuse to acknowledge their need for God. When we try to build our own lives, our own successes, or even our own futures, without inviting God into the process, we are building towers destined to fall. The Tower of Babel may seem like a distant story from ancient times, but its lessons are just as relevant today. In our modern world, we are often tempted to seek security, fame, and fulfillment through our own efforts. Whether it's through wealth, status, or influence, we too can fall into the trap of building our own towers, structures of pride that are doomed to collapse. As we continue to explore the story of Babel, let's reflect on where we might be relying too much on our own strength, and not enough on God's guidance. Are we building our lives with God at the center, or are we, like the people of Babel, striving to make a name for ourselves without Him? At the heart of the Tower of Babel story is one of humanity's most dangerous flaws, pride. Pride is not merely self-confidence or ambition, it is the excessive belief in one's own abilities, often accompanied by a disregard for the wisdom and authority of God. In the case of Babel, this pride led to direct disobedience against God's command and a desire to seize control of their own destiny. To fully grasp the gravity of the people's actions, we need to revisit God's command following the Great Flood. After sparing Noah and his family, God gave humanity a clear directive, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth, Genesis 9 verse 1. The instruction was simple, spread out, populate the earth, and trust in God's plan for creation. But the people of Babel did the exact opposite. Instead of dispersing across the earth, they chose to settle in one place. Instead of living by faith, they chose to build a city in a tower that would cement their legacy, believing it would make them unshakable. They thought that by consolidating their strength in one place, they could defy God's will and avoid being scattered as He had commanded. Their rebellion was rooted in their refusal to trust God's wisdom. Rather than following His direction, they chose to rely on their own understanding and capabilities. The Tower of Babel is a profound reminder of the destructive power of pride. Pride is often seen as the first sin, before Adam and Eve's disobedience in Eden, it was pride that led to Satan's downfall. Isaiah 14 verses 12 to 15 describes how Satan, once a glorious angel, was cast down because of his desire to elevate himself above God. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens, I will raise my throne above the stars of God, I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly. I will make myself like the Most High. Just as Satan's pride led to his fall, so too did the pride of the people at Babel. They wanted to reach the heavens, with their tower, to make themselves like God, independent and untouchable. In doing so, they repeated the same mistake, believing that they could rise above their Creator, that they could shape their own fate without Him. The physical tower they built was not just an architectural marvel, it was a representation of human ambition unchecked by divine authority. It symbolized humanity's desire to elevate itself, to create its own path to the divine through human achievement alone. This kind of ambition, when separated from the humility of dependence on God, becomes dangerous. The tower, meant to reach the heavens, was a literal and figurative attempt to put themselves on par with God. It was an effort to bypass their need for Him, to reach the divine on their own terms. But in doing so, 
they completely missed the point that true connection to God comes not through human effort or construction, but through submission to His will. While at first glance the unity of the people at Babel seems admirable, it was a unity built on defiance. They were united, yes, but united in their disobedience to God's command. Their collective decision to build the tower and settle in one place was not born out of a desire to honor God or further His plan for creation, but out of fear and arrogance. They wanted to make a name for themselves, Genesis 11 verse 4, to create something so monumental that it would elevate them above future generations. It was an attempt at self-preservation, an effort to create their own security and significance apart from God's design. This disobedience disguised as unity only underscores the dangers of collective pride, where even seemingly noble goals, when rooted in rebellion, can lead to destruction. Pride is one of the most dangerous spiritual conditions because it blinds us to our need for God. When we are consumed by pride, we begin to believe that we can manage on our own, that our achievements, intellect, or status will be enough to sustain us. We no longer seek God's wisdom or submit to His authority. Instead, like the people of Babel, we build our own towers, whether they be careers, reputations, or material success, believing that we can reach the heavens through our own efforts. But Scripture is clear about the consequences of pride. Proverbs 16 verse 18 warns us, Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. The people of Babel were setting themselves up for a great fall, and they were too blinded by their ambition to see it coming. In our modern world, the spirit of Babel is still very much alive. We are constantly encouraged to build our own empires, to chase after success, fame, and personal achievement as though these things will bring us lasting fulfillment. But just like the tower, these ambitions are often built on shaky foundations. Without God at the center, all our efforts to reach the heavens will eventually crumble. We need to ask ourselves, where is pride hiding in our lives? Are we striving to make a name for ourselves, or are we seeking to glorify God in everything we do? Are we following His commands, or are we building our own towers in defiance of His will? Pride may offer the illusion of strength, but in reality, it is the very thing that leads to our downfall. In the next part, we will see how God responds to the prideful rebellion of Babel, and how His intervention both humbles and scatters humanity, setting the stage for a different kind of unity, one that can only be found in submission to His will. As the people of Babel continued their ambitious project, God, observing their actions from heaven, decided to intervene. The Bible tells us that the Lord came down to see the city and the tower they were building, Genesis 11 verse 5. This is a profound statement, as it highlights the smallness of human achievements in comparison to God's majesty. Despite their efforts to reach the heavens, their tower was insignificant in the eyes of the Creator. God saw the danger in what the people were doing, not because of the physical tower, but because of the heart behind it, their prideful ambition and desire for self-sufficiency. The unity they had, though powerful, was being used to defy God's plan. In their collective pride, they had set themselves on a course of destruction. God's concern wasn't to punish their achievement, but to protect them from the spiritual disaster of trying to live without Him. In response, God confused their language. Suddenly, the people could no longer communicate with each other, and the unity they had once used to build the tower was shattered, Genesis 11 verse 7. Unable to collaborate, they abandoned the tower and were scattered across the earth, just as God had originally commanded, Genesis 11 verses 8 to 9. The city was left incomplete, and the tower became a monument not to human achievement, but to human failure. Through this act, God reasserted His sovereignty over humanity. No matter how strong or united they appeared, their efforts to defy Him were futile. In a single moment, God showed that all human power and pride is nothing compared to His will. His intervention served as a humbling reminder that without Him, even the grandest human projects are destined to fail. God's scattering of the people at Babel teaches us a crucial lesson, when we try to build our lives on pride and self-reliance, God will often intervene, not out of punishment, but out of love, to steer us back to Him. 
The confusion of language at Babel wasn't just an act of judgment, it was an act of mercy, preventing humanity from drifting further away from their Creator. This intervention sets the stage for God's larger plan of uniting people not through human achievement, but through faith and submission to His will, which we will see in the contrasting event of Pentecost later in Scripture. The story of the Tower of Babel offers timeless lessons that are just as relevant in our modern world. At its core, Babel is a story about pride, disobedience, and the consequences of trying to live without God. In today's society, we constantly strive to build our own towers, whether they take the form of careers, social status, wealth, or technological advancements. Like the people of Babel, we often focus on making a name for ourselves, pursuing success and recognition without considering God's purpose for our lives. But the lesson of Babel warns us that when we prioritize our own ambitions over God's will, our efforts can become destructive. Just as the people of Babel sought to control their destiny by building a tower to the heavens, we often try to control our own lives, believing that we can achieve fulfillment through our own strength. Yet, the scattering at Babel reminds us that true security and lasting success only come from surrendering our plans to God. When we rely on our own efforts, we risk building on shaky foundations that will eventually collapse. In a modern world interconnected by technology, the unity of language and communication that existed at Babel has, in some ways, been restored. But even in this globalized society, division and confusion still persist. The story of Babel shows us that human unity, when built on pride or self-interest, will always lead to fragmentation. Only when we are united under God's purpose can true unity and peace be achieved. Babel challenges us to reflect on our own lives. Where are we trying to build without God? Are we seeking to glorify ourselves, or to honor Him? The story invites us to return to a posture of humility, acknowledging our dependence on God and aligning our ambitions with His will. Ultimately, Babel teaches us that human efforts, no matter how grand, will always fall short without God at the center. Only through submission to His plan can we build lives that are truly meaningful and lasting. The story of Babel not only teaches the dangers of pride but also contrasts false unity with the true unity that can only be found in God. At Babel, the people's unity was driven by self-glorification and rebellion against God's command. It was a unity based on human ambition, which ultimately led to confusion and division. However, God's plan for humanity involves a deeper, more enduring unity, one rooted in His purpose. The people at Babel were united in their desire to build a monument to their own greatness. Their shared language and goals gave them power, but it was misdirected. When unity is driven by pride, it cannot stand. God scattered them because their unity was based on rebellion, not obedience to Him. Thousands of years later, in the New Testament, we see a powerful reversal of Babel during Pentecost, Acts 2 verses 1 to 4. Here, God once again intervenes in human language, but instead of causing confusion, He brings clarity. The Holy Spirit descends on the disciples, enabling them to speak in different tongues, allowing people from various nations to hear the message of Christ in their own languages. At Pentecost, unity is restored, but this time it is under the power of the Holy Spirit, not human ambition. Where Babel divided, Pentecost united, a symbol that true unity is found when we submit to God's plan and allow His Spirit to work through us. The lesson is clear, human attempts to create unity through pride and ambition will always fail. True unity comes from following God's will. In Christ, we are called to be one body, working together for His kingdom, 1 Corinthians 12 verses 12 to 13. This unity is not based on human effort but on a shared faith and dependence on the Holy Spirit. The story of Babel shows us that unity for selfish reasons leads to division. But when we humble ourselves before God, He can bring about a unity that transcends language, culture, and ambition, a unity that draws us closer to Him and to one another. As believers, we are called to seek this kind of unity, living in harmony with others while honoring God's will above our own. In this way, the scattering at Babel serves as both a warning and a promise, 
that while pride divides, faith in God brings us together in a lasting and divine unity. As we reflect on the story of the Tower of Babel, we are reminded of the dangers of pride and the consequences of building our lives apart from God. But we are also shown the beauty of true unity, one that comes through humility and submission to God's will. The lessons of Babel challenge us to examine our own lives, to see where we might be constructing our own towers in pursuit of personal glory or security, rather than trusting in God's plan. Take a moment to think about the areas of your life where you may be striving to succeed on your own, without seeking God's guidance. Are you building on a foundation of pride, or are you allowing God to be the cornerstone of your life? Prayer Lord, we come before you in humility, recognizing that without you, all our efforts are in vain. Help us to see where we've been building our own towers, and give us the strength to surrender our pride. Guide us to live in unity with your will and with others, trusting in your plan above our own. Lead us to build lives that glorify you, not ourselves. Amen. As you go forward, I invite you to reflect on where God might be calling you to take down the towers of pride in your life. Maybe it's in your work, relationships, or personal ambitions. Take time this week to pray and ask for His guidance. Consider how you can focus more on building a life centered on faith, rather than self-reliance. And if this message has spoken to your heart, share it with someone who might also need to hear it. Let's continue to encourage each other to live in humility, unity, and faith, trusting that God's plan is always greater than our own.